Um, some things I can't explain. Um, but that in itself, uh, I'll just keep as it pertains to me and my son personally. But in second, but in Genesis chapter two, verse sixteen. We always focus on the tree that God told Adam and Eve not to eat of, but we never, I, we never, or I'll just speak personally for me and my son, um, never seem to have focused on the, on every tree of the garden that God told Adam that they may, that him and his wife may eat uh, freely of. Uh, they had access to every tree in the garden to eat freely of, except for one tree. And throughout my life, I always heard nothing but that focus being on that one tree, that forbidden tree. But what about the trees that were not forbidden? What about the trees that were of God, you know? You know, even we ourselves, if I had to use something in a metaphoric kind of way or a personification, giving uh something like a tree human qualifications yeah uh, we ourselves are like trees you know planted by god and uh even in our own personal life and speaking personally and i've had this experience um me and my son because uh, what affects me what i choices i make affects him as well you know there are good trees and there are bad trees that come into our life. Um, but the thing, the trickery, the deception of it all is that the bad trees um, don't look like bad trees all the time. They look, they look fruitful. They look beautiful. And that in itself, not realizing that Satan knows how to bless his children just as well as God knows how to bless his. He's a mimicker. He's good at that, you know. Um, just because something looks blessed doesn't mean that it is. That because something looks like it's of God doesn't mean that it is. And uh, which makes me wonder about Eve when she saw the uh, forbidden tree. Um, you know, yeah. yeah, was it something, you know, I don't believe it was something um, dreadful to look at. It had to be pleasing to her eyes and fulfilling, alluring, tempting, because, you know, Satan doesn't come to us with those things. He can. Um, sometimes those something that, that that's ugly can disguise itself as something beautiful, having a wrong man or a spirit attached to it that, that, that kind of draws, has some stronghold on us, alluring us to it or blinding us to it. Like Satan transforming himself into an angel of light, you know. Satan isn't beautiful. He is not beautiful. He was, he used to be, but he's not anymore. So he has to change himself into something to to tempt, to attract, to allure. That's that he knows that uh, we have a taste uh, to or of. And so uh, Eve looking at that forbidden tree... Um, you know, I always go back to this yeah. scripture, yeah. uh-huh, that's in, um, uh, the book of Psalms somewhere, which reads, uh, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but in the end leadeth to destruction. And that tree might have seemed right unto Eve. She might have looked at it as, and this is me speaking, she might have looked at it as saying, you know, it looks like it's of God. It looks like it's okay, you know. And then with looking at that tree and listening to the words, the deceptive words of a serpent, which wasn't the serpent, it was just Satan inside of a serpent's body speaking to her, you know. Um, yeah. Assuming, but assuming wrong. Looking at the outer and not checking the inward, like... Um, Samuel, God speaking to Samuel, going to anoint David, you know, look at not man. God doesn't see as man seeth. Man looketh on the outward, God looketh within. God knew what was in that forbidden tree, but Adam and Eve didn't. They were looking from the outward and not within. And uh, 
you know, the outward, that tree was probably, like I said, looked at beautiful, looked at appealing and alluring, but within it probably had dead roots, uh, poison. I mean, just, just something you wouldn't look at that's appealing at all. Yeah. So, you know, throughout my life, I've always heard people preach on the forbidding tree, but I never heard anybody really, me personally, never heard anybody really speak on all the other trees. What about the other trees in the garden? It wasn't just the forbidding tree in the garden. There were other trees there. You know, what about those trees that God said that Adam and Eve had access to, you know? And that takes me, brings me back to the trees in our life that come in, into our lives and stuff. And I can say this from personal experience, many personal experiences, you know, there are some trees that I took hold of that were very deceptive that I shouldn't have never had taken hold of. And I had to learn the hard way, but that was due to my ignorance. Yeah, yeah that was due to my inordinate affection. And even when God did reveal unto me certain things, it was like uh, I couldn't perceive it or I just felt like I was, uh, that couldn't have been it. So I kept overlooking it and, you know, turning a blind eye to it. But when you belong to God, you're going to eventually have to wake up if you choose or want to, to belong to God at that. You're going to eventually have to wake up and it can be in a, it can be in a rough way. Um, I guess it can be in a moderate way, an extreme way. Um, there's just certain levels, you know, some we cannot choose like Job. Job did not choose the, yeah, the level of extremity that he went through in his life, just like Lazarus, um, but you know, that's just how it is. But I just wondered about that. We're always focusing on the forbidden tree, that forbidden tree, that forbidden tree, and neglect to see all the other trees that were available. And you know, Jesus himself, I say, this is me speaking, was a tree. But you know, if uh, you even read in Isaiah 53, verse 2, uh, when he speaks of Jesus saying, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. And it was saying, going on saying that Jesus had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. There's no beauty that we should desire him. You know, even, even when Jesus came in the New Testament, they didn't perceive him as the son of God. He was an unrecognizable tree. Yes, validated. Yes, called out, uh, pointed out by John the Baptist saying, behold, yes, uh, having the a dove descend down from heaven upon him and God validating him more than once, you know, yes. But there were still people who were skeptic. There were still people who refused to believe that this couldn't be the son of God. This doesn't look like what we had in mind. And that's the same with a lot of us being trees. You know, we don't look like what people had in mind. So they displace us. They walk over us, never realizing they're uh, missing out on a blessing or passing by a blessing. But I love it what a certain late minister said. He said, there were, uh, most people will not recognize or know who you are until it's too late. You know, and uh, and he's right about that. Even with Jesus' life, life uh, there were few, the few he had close to him, but there were many who refused to believe until it was too late. You know, but still we have in these days, and even in the last days, according to Revelations, those who refused to believe, those who refused to bow down. Uh, acknowledge, praise, and worship. Yeah, Jonathan. Uh, any, uh, all those things. And so, going back again to the Garden of Eden, maybe all the trees that Adam and Eve had access to 
weren't as appealing as the tree um, that, that was forbidden uh, uh, for them not to take up. You know, and going back to what God had told Samuel, man, look at the outward, but God look at the within. So we can't judge outwardly. Um, yes, we have to judge the spirit because even things come that's not in so beautiful packages have wrong manners of spirit. So in all things, we have to judge according to the spirit of God. Uh, but it'll be worth doing so worth doing even like King David all acquiring um, acquiring of the Lord you know even like Jesus life always going taking time out going by himself to certain quiet places speaking with his father acquiring of the Lord you know and um, yeah it's worth it it's not something I speak personally. It's not something that I would want to do all the time because, you know, um, you get lazy. You get tired. And life will beat you down to the point where you don't want to do anything. But um, it's worth it to go through a lifetime of long, strenuous things or dealing with certain individuals or having certain individuals in our circle that should never be, that shouldn't or should never have been in our circle. That that, that causes poison, their poison to corrupt our ground, to try to, to corrupt our life or try to corrupt our life, you know? So, yeah, I wanted to touch on that because, you know, um, nobody really speaks on the other trees, you know? It's always that forbidden tree. But there were other trees there in the garden. What about them? It's almost like they were hidden, you know, like they were invisible, like they didn't even exist. Even in our own lives, my own life personally and that of my sons, uh, I can talk much on that of being, yeah, of being invisible, you know. I'm a tree, but I'm not that kind of tree. I'm not that tree in the garden that was noticeable. My son is not that tree in the garden that was noticeable. The only tree that has been focused on was the um, was the uh, was the for uh, was the forbidden tree. That's the only tree that was focused on. That's the only tree I ever heard preached on. But it's like all the other trees were invisible. Just as well as I can relate to me and my son's own life, and have many things and situations to to relate to that and back that up. And even in Jesus' own life, you know, the Son of God in the New Testament. And he was invisible to a lot of individuals. Yeah, as before he revealed, the, uh, there were the few that was close to him that recognized, that saw him. Um, even when Jesus uh, um, revealed himself to the three, um, uh, in a way that was that he didn't do, yeah, that he didn't do with others. And having, uh, I believe it was uh, also seeing Moses with Jesus. And if I'm not mistaken, um, the prophet Elijah was there too. Seeing him in his true holiness. You know, that was just very few, not many, not all. And so, but Jesus was pretty much uh, invisible to a lot of individuals, a tree walking around, a tree of life walking around and nobody saw him. And even if you read the book of Job, um, Job even states and says that um, in Job chapter nine, verse uh, 11, Job even says, lo, he goeth by me and I see him not. He passeth on also, but I perceive him not. You know, and, and that's the same for many of our lives and personally for me and my son's life, you know, is, you know, it's not that God isn't uh, watching. It's not that God is not here. It's uh, we're not perceiving him. We're not. Uh, um, or even seeking him as we should, you know. 
or even there's a scripture that says, you shall seek me with all thy heart. And when thy, uh, I might not be quoting or writing. And when you seek me, you shall find me, you know? So, um, yeah, a lot of invisible trees and there's a lot of God's trees that is not appealing. That is, uh, that would be, that, that go unnoticed, unrecognized, uh, and I can, and I can um, relate to me and my son can relate to that a lot. Being like those trees in the garden. But nobody focuses on those trees. They just focus on the forbidden tree. The one that looks beautiful. And yeah, like, and as, and, and as before, and again, and in closing, that's not always the case because sometimes they can be the flip side. Sometimes there are things that look beautiful, but and 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 as well, and that are yeah, Jonathan, and as well that are of God. Versus sometimes there can be some things that are so ugly, and they are not of God. So that's again, it's going back before that is called uh, uh, judging the spirit by the spirit, the man or a spirit, and not just what it looks like or sounds like, or has. And just like the tree of life being in the garden, I don't believe personally Adam and Eve fully recognized that tree of life until it was gone, until they didn't have it anymore. And just like Jesus in the New Testament, they didn't recognize the tree of life, the giver of life, um, the blessing until it was gone, you know? And even in our own lives, and and how people reject us and look over us, you know. And me personally, I truly believe, and I strongly believe this, and this is me believing this, God hides us, you know. He'll present us, but if people continually reject us, like God presenting Jesus and people continually rejecting him, like Jesus coming before his own, and they constantly rejected him, so he went to the Gentiles, you know, um, uh, if when God presents us to people constantly and they constantly reject us, um, God is not going to continue to allow that. He'll move us. He'll hide us. Um, not just that, you know, it's just a lot of things God will do. And I personally believe there have been uh, certain instances in my life where, uh, uh, and this is me saying this, strongly believe that God had an angel and yeah, and Jonathan, God had an angel hide us with his wings, explicitly hide us with his wings to where, you know, you know, people just literally did not see us. We can be standing in the midst of a crowd and it's like being a ghost and people just walk right through you like you're not even there. They don't see your tears. They don't see your pain. They don't see any of that. You're invisible. Um, and that can be painful, but I do believe sometimes God allows that to be for whatever reason. But he will present us from personal experience. He will present us to others, but he won't. If they constantly reject us, he'll just move us. Just like they rejected Jesus and Jesus was moved. Okay, you don't want me. My own people don't want me. I'll go to the Gentiles, you know. So, you know, um, yeah, the uh, trees in the Garden of Eden that were um, available unto them became common. Um, versus the tree that was, un that was forbidden um, was, was, just, was just noticeable. And uh, for me personally, in my son's life, um, we became uh, we became common to a lot of individuals, and um, common to the point where they didn't think or believe we would ever move, or that God would move us. And um, God moved me and my son, and He's still moving us. And um, it's like that. It's like how they have the saying. Um, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Um, 
but I've seen individuals who knew what they had, who didn't know what they had or didn't know what they have until it was gone. But they were so full of pride that they weren't going to come down and acknowledge them, just like the Pharisees and Sadducees. Um, they knew Jesus rose from the grave, but they, instead of acknowledging that, they went and had rumors and lies spread about saying that his disciples came and stole the body, you know. Um, so whether people are aware of you or not, um, they choose, they, you either become common or they choose to make you common. And, um, so, uh, yeah, wanted to talk about that.